Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you all for being here. Um, I want to continue a little bit of the conversation we're having last week, uh, but um, in terms of how to listen better. Um, it is clear to me that given everything that's going on in the world, climate change, uh, all these crazy storms, earthquakes, atmospheric rivers, um, political and social unrest, uh, killing, mass killing, mass shooting, um, including the wars that are brewing or happening all over the planet. There is a underlying tension or perception of fear that we're all living in. Many may not acknowledge it, but it's there. And it's so strong in some instances, for some of us who are more intuitive, that it begins to create um, unease in the body, areas where the fear is lodged and locked cellularly. It's the experience that it's almost like a, 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 a physical dissonance, like your body knows the truth that your mind and your consciousness is refusing to admit. And it's a question of having inner conversation with your uh, dropping into the area where they, the, the typical query and going into that place and acknowledging that you're feeling something. And what is it that you're feeling? Is it one feeling, a combination of multiple feeling and so on and so forth. So as I'm, as we are doing this, it became very clear to me that the thing that we need to really focus on and be very cognizant of is to focus very deeply and very profoundly into a connection with the white volume or what I call the rest of God. And um, I have to tell you, it's it's actually so counterintuitive and at the same time so easy to get to yet so complicated that and, and I'm going to go to the steps and try to explain to you how to arrive at that location and how to to allow it to happen and the benefit that's included in when we do a normal query Let's say, for example, we have a discomfort in our chest or in our upper back. When we take the deep breath, the universal breath, and we relaxed, 12 breath, and then we allow ourselves to go into that location and we begin to let our mind, our consciousness, listen to that area to see if it has any information that it wants to tell us. So that's the initial first step. But soon after that, because of the heart and mind coherence, we begin to query it by asking it, what am I feeling? To kind of guide the unpacking of the discomfort. Is it one feeling or a combination of multiple feelings? Have I ever felt this way before? And you allow each time your inner intelligence, your own body to reply and to answer you and to give you guidance and to kind of help you unpack what's in there. And we are so trained in doing this with the Dentian, with all kinds of things that we're doing, that what I'm gonna say here is gonna be counter completely to all of it. It's not that the mechanic is the same because the technique is the same, you still do the universal breath, and you still allow yourself to, to be in listening mode, as if every cell in your body, the more than 50 trillion cells in your body had ears. But instead of you querying and trying to figure something out, what you do is that you surrender. One by one, whatever discomfort, let's say the discomfort was in your upper back, 
you take a very deep breath and you say, I release all attachments, fears, and control. And I surrender and think of the location and I surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity. And then you think of the next location where there's discomfort, your knee, wherever the, the next place is. Whatever physical or emotional or psychological point in your body, there is tightness, uh, congestion, or things that, that seem to be uh, withholding flow and release. I surrender to the great emptiness and endless luminosity. You're releasing the attachments that are connected to you. You're releasing the fears. And more importantly, you're releasing the control. Because all of the problems that we have in our body or in our energetic and emotional body is connected to us trying to manage and maintain control so that we can survive. So we have to be very careful not to um, uh, do this because it's completely counterintuitive. And as you keep doing this, what's going to happen is that over a period of time, as you release and let go, you surrender attachments that are related to stuff you're feeling in your body. You surrender, for example, if you have somebody emotionally in your mind that you're having some problem with, I release that attachment, that fear and that control. And I surrender to the great emptiness and endless luminosity. If there is a, something going on in your, in your social circle, you release it as well. In the country, you release it as well. In the world, war, uh, uh, inequity, uh, social injustice, uh, uh, people dying, things that all you know have agitated you throughout the day. Even the perception that you're getting, listen to me very carefully, even the perception of the world that you're receiving, the stimuli that you're receiving from the five senses that you have, touching, tasting, smelling, hearing, seeing, even those, you all, those five senses, you surrender them completely into the great emptiness and the endless luminosity. You keep surrendering, you keep releasing, you keep letting go. And as you keep doing this about everything that you're feeling in your body, you're letting go, you're surrendering. I'm letting go, I'm, I release all attachment, I release all fear, I release all this, I release all that. And as you keep releasing and releasing like this, there's gonna be a point where there is nothing else to release. Remember, your five senses or the things that connects you to 3D reality. This is the way we perceive the world. And because we're perceiving 3D and we're trying to transcend into 4D and 5D, the realm we're trying to reach where the rest of God exists is beyond 3D. So you start with the stuff that are in your body first, the sensation, that's what you're perceiving. Then you go, you proceed to your, even your five senses, what allows you to perceive the world. You surrender them into a great emptiness and less luminosity. And beyond that point, <clears throat> you will come to a place where what you're feeling or what you're sensing is a complete release and openness. A vast sense of broadness and expansion. And when you're in that expansion, you have entered into infinity times infinity, the blessed field. And in that space, you can begin to, um, and when I'm when I'm there, typically, I I, what I'm seeking, and I keep repeating this to myself. I'm looking for the rest of God. 
because one of the, there are several characteristics or several things I perceive in my own personal meditation when I get into that, that experience, that, that, that openness and that release. What in Buddhism, Tibetan Buddhism, they call that the, 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 the true essence of being. Again, think of the word that we said. I release all attachment, fears, and control, and I surrender to the great emptiness and luminosity. The emptiness is this vast, and, and, and it, it's a combination of two things. In Tibetan Buddhism, in the Tibetan Book of the Dead, they talk about it as being the, uh, the indivisible emptiness and luminosity. They are indivisible. You can separate them. So it's... It's a place where there is a sense of nothing. So it becomes empty. So all your senses, all of your attachments to everything, you have to let them go. You know, we have habits of um, being attached to certain topics, subject, pet peeve, okay? Whether it is political or social, and you keep going over the same things over and over again, you have to let go of all of them. Whether it is a political issue, whether it's a social issue, whether it is war, whatever it is, you have to let it go. And when you surrender and you empty it out completely and open yourself up completely, then you get to a place, you get to a better place and you begin to experience the expanse. Infinity times infinity. And I keep repeating to myself, I look for the rest of God. Because the, the, the typical uh, sensation, that, can, that, that quality that exists in that space, it's complete stillness. Silence. Because at that moment, you have no thoughts whatsoever. Because you have no distraction. If you attach to nothing... You cannot be distracted by, 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 by anything. And then the next thing that will happen is that you're going you're gonna to begin to feel because you're so unburdened. What you're doing is that you're unburdening yourself of all of your attachments, your fear, and your control. And once you are completely unburdened because you've given it over, in the church, in the charismatic movement of the Catholic Church, they call it finding the rest of the Holy Spirit. It, 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 you, have to re, you have to unburden yourself into the Holy Spirit. You have to, to surrender your pain, your suffering, your agitation, your battle into the Holy Spirit. And when you and again, while you're doing all of this, you're doing the universal breath nonstop. You're taking deep breath. From the core of the earth, and you're releasing them back into source. Then the little breath comes from source, and it's dropping back into the core of the earth. And as you keep doing this with the breath, the breath is key. It drives this. It's not just a consciousness thing, it's a, an awareness thing, but it's also the breath. The in, in, in yoga, they call this pranayama. As the breath moves through, all of a sudden, you're going to be open up and you're going to find this, this, this unbelievable release where there is no burden. There is no fear. The key to it is that there is so much fear underlying the collective unconscious of humanity that even if you were you know, in light all the time, within less than 24 hours, you're going, these fears are going to congregate around you because 9 billion of your fellow human beings are in the same state and we are sharing psych uh, collective unconscious with them. That fear is going to grip you. We need to reverse the trend as way showers and we need to practice this. It's a, co it's a, it's a slight correction. You, you're not going to go in there to ask question or to query and to try to discover information. You're going in there to find the rest, to be completely unburdened and be without fear.
That's the purpose. And as look for the rest of the of God, seeking the rest of God, looking for the rest of God, and as you keep breathing and breathing and breathing like this, you will get to a point where the rest in you will be one. It's this vast expanse. And, and I'm, I, I want to say this to you. Although it says emptiness and luminosity, the place you go in is not in, in, uh, a nihilistic void. It's far from this. It's filled with benevolence, with kindness, with all kinds of solution, but everything in there is in a different language than that of our five senses. And it takes a moment for your consciousness to try to translate the feeling into something we know in 3D. The characteristics that are clear, no thoughts, complete stillness, and rest. Unburden, to be completely unburdened. And as you sit in that space or you, you open yourself to it, the expense can suddenly begin to be all of a sudden, you think you pass out. All of a sudden you're like, I, I, oh, what happened to me? I, I think I, I dozed off somewhere. I went somewhere. You did not doze off. Because you're going from 3D into 4D and 5D. You're, you're moving up the scale, the dimensional scale. You're going to a back door a gap between one state of consciousness and another. And when you're going in the gap, typically a lot of people pass out. They, they, they break out and then they wake up later. In time, if you keep this practice, you're not gonna pass out anymore. You're gonna transition into it with completely conscious. You're gonna go into a state of you basically saying, I surrender and I release all attachment. And you're gonna get to a place where all of a sudden the release will happen. And you find yourself in this expense and in this rest, this profound, unexplainable rest. Now I've talked, I've spoken about <clears throat> the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and, uh, there, there are two ways the Holy Spirit manifests. One, <clears throat> if you've ever been around people who are touched by the Holy Spirit, they start shaking and trembling and moving, etc., um, kind of violently, right? That's one state. This is when the Holy Spirit is trying to dislodge what's negative in him and correct something. The other state, it's the rust. <clears throat> in Hinduism, the Holy Spirit is Shiva the creator God, the powerful, powerful Shiva. That Shiva, when it comes in and is a young man and start dancing and moving and start creating the world, the energy is so powerful in Hinduism that no one, unless you're a temple or yoga studio, you are not allowed to have a Shiva statue in your home. The energy is too big and too powerful. It will, it will cause chaos in your environment. It will, it will shake it. Most people have a rock that they call a Shiva Lingam, a soft rock with a, some striation ball around it that represents the energy of Shiva. The other state that Shiva is in, which is most of the time, Shiva is in deep meditation. It's a beautiful man, very handsome, eye closed and there's usually a cobra around his neck and he's in deep meditation with his eyes closed. That's the rest of the Holy Spirit. That's the rest of God. And this is the state that you need to seek. We all need to seek right now. There's too much chaos in the world and we. it's very easy for us to become the dog that's looking at squirrel, running after squirrel. 
squirrel, squirrel, we're running around looking at things, following things that, that will agitate us even more and create more fear. You don't need to be informed about everything that's happening. Trust me on that. What you need at this moment is to be in that rest. Because that rest of God becomes the key to unpacking, not only calming your spirit down and calming your consciousness down and allow you to walk to the valley of shadow and death and feel no evil. But not as an intellectual thing, as an actual state of being. Can I please ask a question? Yes. Uh, right now, I've been listening to you regarding this uh, resting in the spirit. You you explaining. Uh, I'm I'm trying to to understand the phenomena that sometimes happen in the church, because I myself have been have been rested in the spirit in the charismatic church many many times so i'm trying to understand now what what you're saying is uh, it's 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 a way of getting there mm -hmm. but in the church resting in the spirit it's it's almost like i can't even explain it to you um it's like they call upon the spirit, mm -hmm. okay, of the Holy Spirit. And when they call in it, and then you're praying and you you are you are you are abandoning yourself to the spirit. And as you do this, they usually go around with the Eucharist. And as the Eucharist is passing by, it's always like the rest. You, it's it's almost like it's 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 almost like a ton of bricks that hit you, mm -hmm. and then you you cannot stay on your feet. Mm -hmm. You fall down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but for me, it's always the falling down, mm -hmm. and when you fall down, it's always they always say in the churches because the spirits say that you need a healing or you need some kind of a of a of a in other words the, the spilling is the spirit is filling you up of what it is that you need okay uh -huh. there are people that when that happened to them like you say they they just start jumping around uh -huh. and they they start uh they start uh, 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 dancing and they, they start doing certain things. There are others, they start yelling. Mm -hmm. So all, all these, all these dynamic, it's like they always say that it's like you just said, it's unrooting something in you. Mm -hmm. And the yelling could be something emotional. Yeah. Okay. And, and and things like that but but to me it's always like it's it's always like the spirit choose to come to you it's like you were you're chosen you know you know for for the holy spirit to to fall upon you and i guess it depends on the person how the way they're praying and and so on and so forth but the the dynamic that you're saying here, it's almost like you seek in it. You 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 come in, you 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 know. You know I, I'm trying to yeah understand the 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 two dynamic. Okay, so what I can the way I can respond to this is is as follows. Uh, thank you for your contribution. The 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 church has ritualized this. The Catholic Church ritualized it. They create a ceremony, a ritual with the Eucharist, and they call upon the Holy Spirit to, to bring it forth. And 
what I'm saying is that you you said you the, you surrender, you release. I'm asking you to do exactly the same thing. You're going to release all of your attachment, fears, and control, and you're going to surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity. It's the same as the Holy Spirit. It's but the... It's, yeah, the creative, it's the creative principle that manifested everything. It's the same as the Holy Spirit. Okay? Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is that you're surrendering into it. And as you surrender into it, you will and you will find it. What I'm what I'm asking, what I'm doing, and you can follow me if you want. It's an invitation. You don't have to follow me. You can do your own thing. What I'm saying, what I'm suggesting right now is that the way the world is right now, this is what we need to do. Because there is enough agitation in the collective unconscious to infect us just by going to sleep. Because we're connected to the collective unconscious of everyone else. And when you wake up, you, you go to sleep fine with the, with the spirit when you, you wake up and everything inside of you is tight. Because you're picking up fear from the collective unconscious. There has to be a way for you to daily unburden yourself of that load. Because none of us can, the change is so difficult that will happen, that are going to happen. None of us can figure out a way out. And if we keep trying to control and figure it out, we're going to waste a tremendous amount of energy and we're going to get caught in a scale of event that we are not capable of handling on our own. But God can. So we take what you're doing with every burden, every sensation you feel in your body is that you're taking it and you're lifting it to God. You're saying, Holy Spirit, or, 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 or infinity times infinity, luminosity and, and uh, emptiness, take this burden away from me. And one by one you do this, it will unburden you and you're going you're gonna to find the Holy Spirit there. You're going to enter into that space. And I have to tell you, it's not, it doesn't, it's a different way of getting at the same thing. It's not complicated. In fact, when you do it a few times, it becomes the easiest thing in the world to do. And I look forward to go into it because when I'm in there, it feels fantastic. Because I am not loaded with anything. I don't have to solve anything. I don't have to do anything. And, a sense, and I have to add to it that time operates differently when you're in that state. You may think that you're in there and you're there for, you, you, you've been connected to that, to that location for, uh, to that space for like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then it's an hour and a half later. And the church is right. Whatever healing that you need happens, whatever you need. This is you're talking you, what we are doing when you're getting that speed that, that luminosity, you're in the throne room of God. And when you're there, it is so powerful. And again, initially, this is why I'm saying is that it, it's a misnomer to say it's emptiness. It's an expansion because there's nothing that's empty in there. It's filled with benevolence and kindness. We don't have the language to describe the gift that's coming to us. So we are saying emptiness and luminosity. Why the Buddhism, they say luminosity, because a lot of time when you go in there, when the expense occur, everything is white. It's a bright white space, a white volume. I shouldn't say space because it's not a box. It's a, it's a, it's a giant volume. It's an immense volume. And when you're in there, you can begin to sense. A lot of time I sit in there, I don't know for how long, and suddenly answers the question I didn't know I had come to me. Idea, solution set related to people in my family, in my circle of influence, that I didn't even know was in me comes to me. All of a sudden, 
parts of me that felt that would just open up, everything open up, everything release. In um, Kundalini Yoga, that that volume, I was talking to a friend of mine who was a Kundalini Yoga practitioner, that, that, that white volume, it's where they go when they're giving, where, they give, where they're doing either remote or hands-on healing. They call upon that, that energy, that spirit to heal. It is Shiva, but in deep and profound meditation, not in the active state, but in the more receptive state. And for me, that state is even more powerful. Because you are now connected, not to just your intelligence, but divine and cosmic intelligence. It is not just you. Because at that moment, the father and you, or the father, mother, and you are one. I've received all kinds of things. Everything that I've, this is the way I received the torsion field. Any questions, any comments? Thank you, Pierre. This is exactly um, what I wanted or needed to hear. I have for years thought about our lives in this density of 3D as being, as separating us from the real um, essence of who we are and our connection to the eternal. And I I've often thought about people, historic people, family members, friends who passed on. And I thought, and I have thought, what was their struggle meaning? What was the meaning of it? Why did they go through life with such burdens? Yes, we have obligations and responsibilities we need to tend to, but they, when they're gone, what was the use of it? It feels like there is no meaning unless you have the connection as you just have been speaking about to lead a life of greater joy hmm. rather than the dense, disgusting, you know, devastating, soul devastating essence of our 3D world. So live with with the purpose of that connection and then there's meaning to your life otherwise it seems like it's struggle responsibilities duties work and yes chop wood carry water still <laughs> but but this begins to make a great deal more sense and what we're missing to make li our lives worthwhile. Yes, Janice, and I, I love what you're saying um, for many reasons. When you, although Darwin kept talked about survival instinct as being a prime instinct, it was not the only instinct that a uh, human being had. He was wrong about that. Yes, the survival instinct is very powerful and you see it in nature. Everybody's trying to survive, to control in the environment, to, to uh, 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 find a way to, to fight and flight response to try to survive. But what he didn't no note in his observation, giving his own training or whatever psych psychology, is also the interdependence that exists in nature. It's everywhere. 
okay? Plants, root of our plants, uh, depends on the, uh, 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 the, the, the mushroom and the mycelium uh, 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 stuff, nutrient that exists in there to communicate with each other. We, for example, depend on the good bacteria in our gut to process or digestion correctly. We have the symbiosis that exists between us and so many things in nature everywhere. Now, for example, plant, uh, no plant can actually fruit uh, uh, without the pollination of bees. There, there's interdependence. There's cooperation everywhere in nature, right? But the, the instinct to survive is very potent and very powerful. And most of us, because of the enculturation and the environment we exist in, we've been domesticated, not only men, but now we've been domesticated to believe and to actually exist in a state of uh, perception of lack all the time. And therefore, we have to find a way to survive. If there is lack, we have to figure out a way to survive. We have to store food. We have to put money in the bank. We have to uh, pay the mortgage, do this. And, and the whole culture of the world is predicated on the survival and all five senses are glued to watch for the signs and stimulus that may bring imminent uh, uh, danger to our survival and we react to it. And right now the planet is an overdrive of those similar. But for us to help humanity and guide humanity into the higher dimension and densities, it is these exact stimuli. It, it's, um, uh, and these stimuli, by, by the way, are being inflated by what the Buddhists call the Maras, the Lord of Death, that, that what they call the benevolent deities in the Tibetan Book of the Dead. They are, they are creating gigantic illusion directed out of five senses to generate the fear. And it's a test, it's an immense test for us to go counterintuitive because the doorway to find transcendence exists in the rest. And we have to find a way to put that in our spiritual practice so that we can connect to the rest. That's the first part response for you, Jonas. But the second part of this is connected to the people who have departed. It's funny because I, I finished reading, writing my book. The first draft is done. I finished everything. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very happy about that. Okay, <laughs> But in one of the chapters, I, I've spoken about exactly the, how we, because it's, it, by the way, through that rest I'm teaching you right now, it's the key to sensing what the 4D and the 5D feel is or appear to be like. If we're not in that rest, we will not see it. If we're too busy running after squirrel because you know we're distracted by this and the other, we will never find it. And as you go into that deep practice of the rest, what happens is that because in order for us to go to a destination through quantum superposition, we have to understand the space-time coordinate or the, of the location we're seeking. It's like in your GPS saying, please take me, you put the address, driving direction four, and then you, you put the address. You have to put an address. If we don't know the address, we will not be able to go to it. The way we do this is that you have to enter into the rest first. You have to be completely unburdened of everything that's connected to the 3D. And when you're sitting in there long enough, after doing this for several multiple months, you can begin to ask the blessed field when you uh, or the rest to show you what the landscape of the 5D looks like feels like or is like. And the reason I'm saying this, Janice, I'm going around, I know, I'm going to wrap it. <laughs> I'm going to put a bow on it. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Uh, uh, the reason I'm saying this, it's because the one thing that's going to happen to us at the moment of the galactic equator crossing 
the three days of darkness, when when all of a sudden the world, our world, nine billion people are going to diverge into multiple parallel and dimensional realities. They're going to separate. Okay. I've identified something like six or seven different worlds. Out of all of them, only one takes you into the higher density. All the other one are going to take you to parallel. So the parallel uh, uh, realities or other Earth-like world that are still in 3D. Mm. Let's say one is xenophobic, one's hedonistic, the other one is uh, enhanced, meaning computer enhanced. The other one, it's all going to be horizontal. Only one of them is going dimensionally, is going vertical, right? So as so, so when we go to a dimension, if you go to a parallel world, let's say uh, talking about missing family members and friends that have that all passed on, when when the divergence occur, the people who are going to go dimensionally, four D, five D, six D, and beyond. They're, they're going to be so expanded. And because now they will master time and space, there will be no mourning because they still can go visit their friend, even though their family members and friends may be in parallel reality horizontally. Because time and space is nothing to them. They have mastered it. Whereas for the people who are going horizontal, hedonistic, xenophobic, uh, uh, um, 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 uh, any of the other type of reality, uh, parallel world, what's going to happen to them is that they're going to be, they, it's going to appear to them that their family members and friends that they love, that they had history with, is going to disappear and they have no connection to them. No physical connection and they're going to miss, miss them and they're going to grieve. When you go into that rest, you begin to move into that transcendence. And pretty soon, you will connect to all of the soul that are so-called not here, because there is no separation. The blessed field is everything that there is. And yet at the same time, nothing. Both of them at the same time. Did that answer your question, Janice? And it did. It did, and it led to another if I may, uh, if our goal is to enter the rest, the blessed field, what are we doing in the physical? Why don't we just go there into non-physical? Because, well, well, this is what the transition is about. This is exactly what the transit is about. We are now in the tricycle stage with the training wheel. Right? That's what we're doing now. You're, you're, you're completely right it eventually will lead into this. But we needed the experience. In other, in other words, uh, let's put it, let me explain it in a broader sense. So what's happening in the world right now with the chaos being so big and all of us being triggered emotionally, agitated by the squirrels, and all of us are running around trying to figure out what, you know, this is distracting me, the work situation, the, this, my health, and all the things that are distracting us. And you're running after them, trying to fix them, and. Okay, so what happened is that as you're doing this, this is a training wheel about the illusion, the world of illusion. Mm -hmm. When the transit and the three day of darkness actually happen, it's gonna be on a scale that you and I cannot even imagine. In fact, the suggestion by everyone and the chapter I just wrote is about exactly that. There's a chapter that's about the galactic equator crossing. You need to stay indoors, away from your windows, and be in prayer, connecting to the exact uh, uh, rest of God and asking for safe passage. While thinking that safe passage into the new earth as the GPS destination of where you want to go. There's going to be all kind of chaos. Things are going to shake on the outside. There's going to be noise. There's going to be light. There's going to be, because at that moment, cosmic radiation will bathe the planet everywhere. And all kinds of, uh, uh, not only cosmic energies and stray energies are going to be colliding with the planet 
But more importantly, there's going to be also all kind of dark principalities that are going to try to snatch a, 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 a moment of you being out of alignment could take you to the wrong place. Why we're going through what we're going through now? Because it's trying to train us for something, an even harder test, which is the actual crossing. Where we need for 60 to 80 hours to remain in prayer and alignment and actually remain in that rest and ask God to take us into the silent place. Why is it so complicated, Janice? Because the reward of that great. Mm -hmm. So we're doing this not just for ourselves either, are we? Absolutely. That's the point of the 144,000. Right. Whether you know it or not, you're part of it. You're part of that collective. That's the, that's the point. Right. Because the rest of humanity will not have done all this work. And when we are around the world, 144,000 of us will have done this. We will give, we will create a bridge. Remember, and in, in, in 2009, Lord Mekisidek wanted us to do the Ascension Wave uh, group, and I started doing this. And he had done a channeling where he said exactly that: you have to create a, a, a ball, a hole into the heaven, ball an opening into the heaven. And you are the architect and the engineer, and in fact, you are the the the, the beam, and the structure, and the armature to create this edifice. Thank you, Pia. That gives me um, a sense of purpose and a, a goal, uh, and a pur really a purpose of meaning of. Uh, more than obligations and duties and struggles and successes and, and all of it. It it makes uh, it makes sense now. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and this is this is what the book is about. It's the path. How do you do this? How do you get from where we are right now into being the real volunteer and, and actually do this work? And, and again, we are not going to be disconnected to a loved one. The people who go into the parallel world or go horizontal, they will, they will miss them. Because they will, for them, to them, and they're going to grieve for a long time because it, there is no goodbye. It's going to be one moment, the, the friend and family is out there, the next moment, they're, they're gone. They're disconnected. They're, the realities will separate. Once at three days of darkness, they will find some of themselves somewhere else. And all their friends and family members, they they had familiarity and, and maybe even blood connection with, but that have made a different choice will, will be somewhere else. And they, in turn, in their other world, will miss them too. But for those who went vertical, because of the, the connection of time-space continuum, they will have no problem visiting them. Their friends and family members will not see them or know that they are there because they are not dimensional, higher dimensional being. But we will see them, we will know them. We will see there is no disconnection. Any other questions or comments? Again, it's not, it's not complicated. Yet it is complicated in the sense that everything that's a, land, uh, a landmark for us in 3D, we have to let it go. This is why in the Kuan Yin Heart Sutra, she sounded like she was talking, you know, the Zen Buddhist, you know, kind of thing. Form is emptiness and emptiness is form. That, that, you know, that kind of language. This is what she was talking about. 
we have to go into that, that place where we let go of all of it. And when we're in that space, suddenly we have, and again, there are gifts that are connected to it. Not only gift for ourselves, because it provides tremendous healing and rest. I have been in serenity now that I've been seeking that place for several days now. And I'm practicing it morning, night. I'm practicing it twice a day because, you know, I, when you're really, when you're a leader at all for, or an intuitive and a, a, a psychic and you're beginning to sense this year going toward the election in the United States, it's going to be very rough. There are things on the horizon that are very scary that are coming. It's not just me, my other friends who are also teachers and leaders are feeling it too. So instead of focusing on this, because in my dreams, in my, in, 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 you know, even if I'm, I'm not consciously bringing it up, my body knows the truth and my body is perceiving it. And when I go to sleep, it's showing up in my dream and I'm waking up not, not completely aligned. So I have to seek that space so that I can push out and I can surrender that burden into the blessed field, into the Holy Spirit, to allow God who knows better. I don't need to carry this. I don't need to control it because I can't. It's the karma of the planet. Everyone on the planet will go through this. I don't know if you notice this. It's not just in America that we're going through regressive changes. It's happening all around the planet. It's the karma of the planet. And it's the way we are being trained for a major thing that's going to happen probably 20, uh, 2030 or beyond. And it's going to be so big and so major, it will make what we're going through. Although I'm saying this, when I channel this, I, I was in complete disbelief because if so, anybody had told me four years ago, I, I would have gone through everything I've gone through emotionally for the past four years, I would have told them, you're lying. It's not true. What they are saying basically is that what's going to happen between those three days or even worse, more, more emotionally triggering. Because it won't be just you know, political stuff, uh, a new law that's passed, things are more expensive. It won't be things like this. It will be more, the entire planet will be dark for three days. While all of these incredible light shows and sound, cacophonic sounds, howling stuff, it, and also it's a, a, a pervasive sense of fear will grip the whole planet. And only those who have been trained to go into that rest are capable of boring this opening and help everyone who wants to go dimensionally vertical to pass through this bridge and get out of, the, uh, out of the chaos, out of Dodge. Now, I have to share with you, my friends. Yes, questions. Uh, Pierre, yes. Um, what, you know, what if you are not home when this happens? If you are, you know, on a train somewhere, or you, are you, 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 you know, you were saying be inside and all of that. But if you're out already, what happens then? You're gonna you need, you have to find an indoor place to get in. First of all, what's gonna okay. happen is that all electricity in the planet will cease. All electric okay. equipment will not function. Okay. Okay. So okay. if you're on a plane, the plane is gonna have to do a crash landing. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. You understand? E everything that's electronic, that's that's connected to electricity, will not function for three days. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Okay, you, you need to seek somewhere indoor to, to gather and to, to 
for those of us who are intuitive, we're going to feel it and know it's coming. I'm not the okay. only one that's psychic that's intuitive in the world. When something that big is going to happen, we will know it. It will show up in our dream. We will be prepared. Don't okay. doubt that. Believe in that, okay? Because if you're going okay. into the rest of the Holy Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit will guide you, will tell you, be prepared, be ready. Okay. It's a Pierre? Yes. What about the AI? The AI will not function. It's electrical. <laughs> Everything, it's, it's going to be a reset. Be still and know that I am God. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, the AI will malfunction. It's it's a, it's electrical it's electrical intelligence. Every electrical electro equipment will just malfunction. By the way, I the way I channeled it, there's probably going to be an X eighty or X one hundred class solar flare or multiple of them, and then they will they will literally collide with the earth, and every electrical equipment will just malfunction. Any questions, any comments? I want to talk about this in terms of the benefit that he can create. My personal benefit is that I am at rest. I'm unburdened. My spirit feels light. Everything is taken from me. I don't feel I have to fix or do anything because God has the wheel. God has everything. Okay. And uh, I have shared with you that I have these uh, two senior friends I've met on the waterfront, going there for years now, uh, meditating on a daily basis, weather permitting, and we became friends. I first met this this woman first, and then she introduced me to another friend of hers. She's more open uh, to. She read my book. She read, reads my channeling. She listens to my meditation uh, uh, online, and. Uh, he, on the other hand, was a Vietnam veteran. He had a very hard life. He, um, uh, but he's a, he's a nice, older Italian gentleman. He's a kind person. He's a giving person. And I like talking to him. When I'm with them, I have no agenda. I'm not trying to teach I'm just trying, I don't know why God is sending them because I, I was there, I, I sat there first and somehow they, they came to me. So I'm not questioning it. We we see each other around the same time almost every day. Two days ago, was it three days ago? I am in the rest of the Holy Spirit. I did the meditation connection in the morning. I'm in the rest. I'm so relaxed and so at rest. I had said to the the woman was the, my friend, that the, the gentleman has a problem over a year and a half ago. I said, something inside of him is broken. I don't know what it is, but he's suffering deeply. Because there are moments where there is stillness, particularly when she can't show up because she has an errand she's, she's doing. And I'm talking to him the moment where in the conversation, and I know it's because my energy is so big and I'm in the rest, I can feel the burden in him. And sometimes it's showing up by me seeing him, his mouth moving, like he's trying to articulate, but he, no sound. Like he, like he wants to say something and he, he's articulating in silence, but he's not saying it. So here we are three days ago, um, I'm on the waterfront and we noticed that something, because the area is brand new, just New and really renovated, it's a field, it's beautiful, there's a beach, it's stunning. They've renovated the entire west side of, 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 the, of Manhattan. The whole, the whole whole waterfront, both west side and east side. So I'm, I'm sitting there and then there's a piece that it looks like it was vandalized. So the female friend is, um, she's very inquisitive. She wants to know answers to everything. She run, and she's she talking about dogs seeing squirrel. She talks to everyone, maintenance, homeless people. She runs to the maintenance people trying to find out what's going on. While she was gone, the, the, the man said, just said to me, I consider your, uh, particularly your peer to be my friend. 
and he began to unburden himself with the pain and the suffering he has had uh, for years now, including the fact that he lost all of his family members. He's in a marriage that just ended, that him and his wife is separated, and that he's broken inside. And he said, you know, I, 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 I can't, something I can't stay at home. I go to a bar and get drunk, but I don't really want to go. I just need some company because I feel so alone. And I'm, 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 and, and he, as he's saying this, I realized that the rest that I'm radiating made the space safe for him to say this to me. And I know for a fact, I am probably the first man that he has ever confessed this to because he's an old fashioned Italian man. And I looked at him and I said, um, thank you for sharing this with me and being so vulnerable. I said, but I want you to know that for over a year and a half now, I had sensed this. And then my other friend was coming, he gave me a fist bump. Well, the long and the short of the story is that this happened two days ago. Today, I downloaded for him one of my meditation on his phone. This is the man who didn't believe in God. Okay? But he is... The pain and the grief in him is so big. He's ready to attempt something else. To me, that's a... That's the fulfillment of a dharma. Again, I don't know why I'm connected to these people, but that's what it is. And I know that the rest that I've been going in is making it safe for him. Because when I first mentioned this, after we talked about this and I mentioned uh, some other stuff about healing and all of that, he's like, I don't understand what you're talking about. because. He has no God connection. I don't understand. And I, I had to go easy. I had to explain it to him. I said, I know it's complicated to explain. He reads a lot. He reads history a lot, ancient history. I said, I, I, I'm, I'm, what I'm saying to you, but I want you to listen to one my, my meditation because it's not something I can explain. I cannot explain God to you, but, but I can demonstrate it to you by, by shifting you through a meditation. Through a healing, I can shift you. And then you will begin to understand. I'm not saying that it's going to be successful, but it's unbelievable progress. It's funny today when, when, when I saw him first, he said, you messed up my mind the other day with what you said, Pierre. You, you really messed up my mind. <laughs> uh, so we laughed about this and I told him, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, we're seeing each other every day. So whatever question you have, I, I don't have an agenda. You're not, I'm not trying to recruit you as a student. If I'm sitting by you and I can, and, 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 and this is a, a perfect example of entrainment, of the process of entrainment. I saw him almost every day for three years. And I just sat next to him, radiating this energy of the rest of God. And when he is ready now, because he knows something is different in me, he verbally now is seeking how to get into that space. Any questions, any comments? Well, I, I congratulate you, uh, Pierre, first of all, on that rest that you have achieved for several days now, but also on being there for somebody 
who seems not important, but whose impact may have a ripple effect you don't even know uh, with other people in his sphere of influence. Mm. That tree that falls in the woods and nobody sees it isn't the case here. It's not uh, a lost mm. uh, victory. Mm. It, um, it's part of a chain of reactions yeah. that will be much bigger than the, the, what you see, I think. Wow. Well, thank you, Janice. I didn't think about that. You're right. And and again, I, I went in there. I have no agenda for all of them. I'm not inviting them to any event. I'm not trying to push something on them or promote them. I just like their company. They are nice people. I just like their company. And I go sit with them. We talked about all kinds of things, political stuff, people walking their dog. What kind of dog is this? You know, typical stuff when you're, when you're in a park. We talk to the maintenance people about the what, how they're improving, and, and sometimes their conversation is political, sometimes it's deeply spiritual. But I don't have an agenda. It's like I'm holding class, and when I start, I have a topic, you know, I have an outline, and I'm going to say this, and I, I have none of that. This is my vacation. <laughs> but while I'm in vacation, I'm still in training. Unconsciously. And I'm, 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 it's funny because um, the young lady, uh, 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 my, my friend, she also kept saying that there's a reason why we all met. There was a reason why that day I, you know, she, and she approached me because I was, I was always many things inside. She approached me. She said, I don't know why, but I, I feel like I have to talk to you. And, and she came to me. And um, uh, I would see her walk. She would say, "Lord, good morning," and, you know. And 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 this is the way we started walk, walk. And and we said hello initially. And then I saw her reading a spiritual book, and she was asking me. I said, "Oh, I read this book," and this is the way the the friendship began. And I suggested a couple of other books. You know, she just finished reading the book of Enoch, cover to cover. So. Again, I'm I'm hope open to what, whatever the universe is trying to present to me. Out of all the people that walk on that path that I see every day walking their dog, saying hello to and all that, uh, the other two that have kind of been attracted to my orbit, there's a reason for it. And forgive me for not being able to quote exactly, maybe um, um, Marjorie or Solidia can, but isn't the phrase, what you do to the least of these, you do to me? Mm. Mm. Profound. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Good for you. Wow. I didn't think about that at all. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see. I'm, I'm going to see them tomorrow in the next few days. You know, Tuesday is going to rain, but tomorrow I'm going to see them and um, and I will be able to, because he was he was running home to go listen to the meditation because the conversation was so good uh, uh, that some of the things I was saying, he's like, okay, I'm going to go home now and listen to it. I'm like, okay. You know, uh, so we'll see. No agenda. We'll, we'll, we'll see. They're just friends. They're just Nice people. Both of them are very, very nice people. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments? Okay, let's take a five minute break and then we'll do a long closing meditation going into the rest of God. All right, five minutes.
take a very deep and slow breath. And as you inhale and exhale deeply and slowly, allow the universal life force that permeates everything. to into our lungs. Keep breathing deeply and slowly. And let your soul and your awareness in the middle of your chest. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I love you. Can I go? Please forgive me. I love you. And I let go. Let your mind and your heart sink with each other. And notice what you noticed. I release all attachments, fears, and control. And I surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity.
I release all attachments, fears, and control. And I surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity. Release all fears and all need to control. Release all desire to do or fix anything. I release all attachments, fears and control. And I surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity. Release all attachment to social injustices and all fears and control. I release all attachments, fears and control. And I surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity. I release all attachment, fears, and control, and I surrender to the great emptiness and endless luminosity. I release all fears related to wars, battle, and death. I release all attachments, fears, and control. And I surrender to the great emptiness and endless luminosity. I release all attachment, fears, and control that I'm holding cellularly in my physical body. Please forgive me. I love you and I let go. I release all attachments fears, and control. And I surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity. I release my desire to Save, rescue, help any person, nation, object, or things. I release all attachments, fears, and control. And I surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity.
I release all attachment, fears, and control connected to my five senses. And I surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity. I unburden myself completely of all fears, all desire to do or repair or fix anything. May the blessed field and infinity times infinity. Take my burden away from me. God, show me your rest.
I seek the rest of God. Let me enter your heart, your love. And rest in your endless and perpetual support. Let an infinitude of repairs and healing and the benevolence that exists in this rest. Comfort me.
the rest of God is with me.
Hosanna into the highest. Hosanna into the highest. Thank you for the blessings. I accept the gifts and I receive with gratitude. Thank you for the blessings. I accept the gifts and I receive with gratitude. Take a very deep and slow breath and whenever you feel ready, you can open your eyes. How you all feeling? Thank you, Ken. It's hard to come back. Yes, I know. But the afterglow remains for a while, so you're going to sleep well tonight. Um, and one of the things as well for me is that when I'm doing this practice, I burn an incense and I like a candle, but I don't listen to a recording per se. Now that I know the steps, I just go through them in silence. And I just listen as you go into that rest. You just listen to what that space has to tell you. I had a couple of visions here and there for things that I was not expecting. Again, it's not an actual emptiness in that it's a void. It's a expansion of consciousness into multiplicity. It's filled with other things. And it's a doorway into the higher realm. And the key to it, when, you, when you're seeking that, is to go into a listening mode, to listen. You're not asking questions, you're just... Like when I go in there and I say I'm listening, sometime after I listen for a while, I can hear a pitch, like a hum in the background. Sometimes the noise on the next door apartment, the, the hallway, siren in the street. And then after that, it's just a pitch. And then sometimes I hear a voice talking to me. I get insight. All kinds of more wonderful things happen. All right, everyone. I want to thank you all for listening tonight. Um, thank you for, if you're watching us on um, Patreon, thank you for your support. For those of you on YouTube, we thank you very much. Blessings. Good night. If you want to like this video, subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Love you all.
Love you.